Hey guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary and today we're out on my deck because I am taking advantage of this absolutely unseasonably warm spring day, well technically it's still winter, to tell you guys a little bit about my plant rack. Now about six months ago, like any good plant nerd would, I convinced my family it was a really good idea to get rid of our family television in order for me to fit more house plants. I got surprisingly little resistance and I was very pleased about that so I thought today that I would show you the process of building a rack and then tell you how I ended up lighting it and how I'm dealing with some of the issues that have come along with having so many plants. Now I know I did put this on my main channel last year but I, I think it's better suited for this one so I thought I'd redo the video and just give you guys a bit more information as well as a follow up on how it's gone. There's been some ups and downs, but all in all, I am extremely pleased and actually kind of want to put another one of these in my home, potentially in the fish room, in order to expand my plant collection. Just don't tell my family. So let's take a look at how we built the rack and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the ups and downs and what I've had to do to maintain it. So I missed a lot of the process of this thing being made simply because it was being done in spare hours. Um, and I was often running our kids around. But this is what it is so far. And it's made to fit in that area beneath our staircase so that I can utilize as many levels as possible to fit my plants. Um, and I may also move some aquariums onto it. We'll have to see yet. So this is the basic structure. Then we're going, Chris is going to weld some cross supports on each level. And then we'll fit it with some boards and then uh, do a little bit of tweaking to make sure it's a little bit more level than it is right now and then move it into the house and set up some plants. Chris brought home a threader and hand threaded all the pipe and I didn't realize sort of how difficult this project was going to be. To me it sounded simple but utilizing pipe and pipe fittings to try and get angles and stuff is pretty freaking difficult but luckily since Chris is so talented with welding as well he was able to uh, weld some things as well to make it a bit more sturdy for us. Now Chris then took a torch and just sort of burnt off the coating that's on the pipes they're sort of greasy and you could do, do this in a bunch of ways but the quickest and most uh, immediate way is to take a torch to it and just burn off that coating that also removes any of the lettering and the um, stickers and then we just took a torch lightly to the boards as well to get bring out a little bit of the wood grain um, then I took some steel wool and just made sure all the greasy fingerprints were off and if there were spots that were too dark you can remove it that way um, as well and this just got any surface stuff off of the boards before we went in with tongue oil. Now tongue oil was chosen because it adds a barrier to prevent the moisture from saturating the boards and it just adds a slight enhancement to the wood. I'm not a big fan of stain and our house has a lot of mixed woods already so I wanted this to be pretty simple and not detract from the the pipe frame. Then my kids, Abby and Clell, and their boyfriends, Austin and Jaden, helped us get it in the house, put the boards on, and start moving things around. I think everyone was pretty excited um, for this project, and it was really great having everyone help me um, throughout the whole thing. It really was, uh, especially with the installation, a family affair, and I am very thankful for that. <laughs> Now after getting it installed, I realized that it might be nice to have some floating shelves, so we designed those as well. But one of the key things I wanted to show you guys is that my husband always thinks about things like leveling feet, um, because things are rarely perfect, and both on the floating shelves that we put in and on the corners of the stand, it's adjustable so that if we were to move this somewhere else in the future that wasn't quite square, we'd be able to adjust it then. So this is the current manifestation of the plant rack and you can see it's gotten pretty full. Uh, no shocker there. One of the biggest issues I have in our home is that we heat with a wood stove and so maintaining my humidity levels in here can be super challenging. Um, 
the, you know, a lot of these plants like things that on the, the more humid side and without doing anything, the humidity in here is about 30%. Ideally, I would have it closer to 60. So I adopt a few strategies. One, I put a little humidifier on the floor, which helped a fair amount. Um, I also mist my plants in the mornings only. Uh, I don't like to do it at night because it seems to make them more prone to rot and also sort of encourage things like fungus gnats. Um, I also have a few little wabikusa, which are basically open bowls of water with plants growing in them. I have an aquarium here, and as I showed you on the wood stove, I have a Dutch oven that we keep full of water when using the wood stove. All of this gets the relative humidity in here at roughly 50 to 55 percent, um, higher when I mist, of course. So that has been something that has been a bit of a struggle. I'm sure it'll be much easier this spring through fall when we're not utilizing that wood stove. The rack was lit with eco, ecozotic uh, LED strips, which multiples of those can go to a single, um, single power supply. And they're also on a central timer. So I was able to customize the lighting on most of the levels with those. On the very bottom level where I have my largest plants, I went with a Spider Farmer 2000 LED uh, dimmable light that's actually made for growing a very different kind of plant. But it's worked out really, really well down here. It's nice that I can turn it down because full blast, you need sunglasses when you sit on my couch. Um, I used some of these outdoor uh, lawn and garden timers, digital timers, in order to control the lights that, um, that are not the ecozotic. And then I also utilize a couple of these like adjustable arm LED plant grow lights um, just for the end of this rack where there's obviously no shelf above it so I can't have too much supplemental lighting, although it does get some from the yard. Um, and all in all, everything has been doing really well. There's tons and tons of growth. Many, many things are flowering, and I think it's pretty exciting. Now, my big concern for this is that once summer hits, a lot of these plants will move out onto my deck, and I am very concerned that I am going to fill it with all new plants and then not have space to move things in as fall hits again. Anyway, this is my plant wall. It's pretty exciting. I still have room for a few more things and I've been playing around with utilizing some of the hanging space with these hanging cloches and thing like, things like that. And I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I can't tell you how much it means to me when you comment, you share, and uh, help drive my engagement on this new plant channel adventure. As always, thank you for the continued support.